Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the, this year's AGM. My name is uh, Benjamin Dolby. I'm the PBC chair for Yaru. I represent the members. I feel strongly about law and culture and would like to carry on our tradition of from, from the past to today to our younger generation. And it's been a pretty challenging year for us, so hopefully we've gotten through the hard part and looking forward to the future. It's about getting the best of what we can for our mob, ensuring that we have a better future where we can. We talk about protecting country and looking after our community and um, you know, maintaining our culture, but when we talk about that, it's not just about what's happening or who there is here today, it's about the next generations. We don't own anything that's around today, it's all for the next generations. And so it's, it's my part and responsibility as a Yaru man to make sure that that's taking place. Plus the other thing is, I don't want my kids to say, what did you do, Dad, when all this was going on? And I want to be able to say that I did what I could. My main thing, I think, moving forward is to make sure that um, all three boards, um, Murramulla, PBC and um, Nyamapura Yaru, are focused on the drive of what the community wants. Um, staying true to the true spirit of the native title that was determined and through the NBY, the business arm, that um, they should be able to deliver on some of the projects, both social and um, for economic benefit of the people. We had a fabulous day out on country at Gabanyanya. Uh, the Women's Day uh, was fantastic. Our NADOC celebration, participation, collaboration with the Shire of Broome, and we're very proud of all the uh, Nulu, our dance, our ceremony, our song lines were celebrated, uh, everybody coming together. Uh, we we uh, enjoy the outings also with our, all our cultural immersion training, uh, going out on country, collaborating all our cultural component. The cultural component consists of teaching about our skin groups, our language, our Dreamtime story, Bugarigara, Bugarigara Janga, uh, language, uh, Leon. I want to speak to you from Leon. We always treat people with respect. We always collaborate that respect with cultural knowledge and working togetherness with the elders with also getting advice from our senior members of our community. Critical and most important part is having guidance from the senior law bosses. When you are on country, country brings you life. When you are on country, country gives you strength. It brings new vision and a vision that comes from old people. So you feel wittier, wittier is pride. We are Wiria Lian when you visit our Nyamba Buru Yaru. Hi, Mabungura Gara Ngayu Nilo Al Koko, Ngayu Yaru Nganga Rija. The highlight for me is more people becoming interested in wanting to learn language, wanting to know about Yaru culture, being involved with um, students from all the schools and teaching more adults. Yarunganga. We just laughed when we found out that, okay, yeah, Gurual Jagu means aeroplane. So our old people um, show, showing us ways of how we can um, make names for new things. So who would have thought that Yaru would have a name for aeroplane, which is Gurual Jagu which means sky roamer. Ngaragonel, ngayenel waljina. I teach language all the time. Just, you know, teaching people in the shops, when I pass them, try and get them to say words. But yeah, I like sharing the language, getting people to speak it. So I hope um, all you people out there learn some Yarunganga. I guess, you know, when you teach it, you feel good about it. Mabu Leon, it's a dying 
language. So I think a lot more people should um, learn it. And then they'll, they'll feel Mabulian too. When you work in the language centre, all you hear is your language, so you have no choice but to speak it and learn it. <laughs> The biggest project for 2021 would be the return of the Lustre exhibition um, and that was a very successful partnership with the WA Museum so NBY co-curated that exhibition and it's about the pearling history of the Northwest and um, our cultural connection to the pearl shell uh, and that's been on national tour for the last six years and finally returned um, back home to Broome after um, the national tour. So we've had it on display for six weeks at the Notre Dame University. And the launch that happened in August this year was a very special event. Uh, we had our neighbours come together, so the Garajati dancers and the Bardi dancers together with Yaru. Uh, that was a very special cultural performance that opened the exhibition up. Um, so there was Nulu song and dance that occurred um, at the Notre Dame campus. I was really fortunate to hear Bart Pigram speak about the conceptualisation of the Pearl Lustre tour and how it's actually toured the whole of Australia. Uh, and it was an amazing presentation visually, but also to have the opportunity to hear how Stephen Pigram and other musicians from this area in particular have connected to country and to place, um, not only as people from this country, but also how it's represented in the music and how it's intangibly connected to place and space. I actually think it should be a permanent fixture in Broome um, and people should pay to see it. Uh, and if you can have events also that tie into the significance of pearling, um, to this place and space as well uh, and connect to Yari people, particularly here, would be very, very powerful. I've done a lot of um, public artwork around the room. Me and the other artists are Matali, so we work together if there's any commission work for public art. We just finished public artwork for um, the golf club. Also, we just done public artwork for Horizon Power. And we both just finished public artwork for Town Beach. The new getty that they're building there. I did um, artwork to um, interpret my, when we was growing up. Town Beach had a cage that we all felt safe in there, swimming. Because I'm um, like protecting us from the sharks. And also, we used to collect a um, lot of um, bitga bitga. In Yaru, Nanga means um, pipi shells. So I interpret that to artwork like with the cage, the shape of the cage, the wires, and uh, bitga bitga together. And I put on the, um, on the footpath. I'm very passionate about like sitting on the boards and um, <clears throat> really looking after countrymen and seeing the problems and you know trying to address it on the board and and things are improving um, but it'll take a while. It's not going to happen overnight. I guess a real highlight for me this year has been in the face of quite a challenging year. Uh, We've maintained all of our programs um, and are still receiving amazing outcomes um, for the community. Uh, and I guess just the spirit and resilience, uh, particularly of our Yarrow staff here who come to work every day um, to, you know, to try and make a, a positive change uh, in their environment and in the community. We continue to run a range of programs across the spectrum of, of life, um, from early childhood development programs through our hippie program, youth training and employment um, in our partnerships with Shell Prelude and the Commonwealth Government Transition to Work program. And of course, we continue to support Yaru members um, through our seniors and disability support funds and funeral funds. We've always discussed about introducing the Yaru language to the hippie packs and to our families. So we've been able to implement those in a small way, but now in a long term, would like to introduce more of the language to our families. 
what we have done is, um, you know, just briefly doing it into role play, um, changing some of the words to Yaru, and families have really embraced it, you know, so, and we've embraced it as staff. We also do the language lessons. Not only are we getting the language, we are then bringing that into the homes and to the families, introducing those slowly and hopefully empowering those families to then um, extend it onto their children, who then can bring that language back into the school, transferring home and school because the kids are already are learning the Yaru language. Today we're out for coffee with some of our hospitality students. So they're doing um, a pre-employment training program with North Regional TAFE. And um, as part of that training, they um, set up in a sort of real cafe sort of um, experience. And we, I've just had a beautiful latte made by our students. Wadmajala <laughs> Mudgalai is Yaru for you to rise up to work. Um, and it's, I guess it's a um, program that upskills young people to through training, both um, sort of industry focused training, but as well personal development and cultural skills. Um, and prepares them for employment. Each year through the Wadmajala Mudgalaya program, we deliver a series of pre-employment programs which are funded through our partnership with Shell. Um, and we focus these on industries that Yaru have specific commercial interests in. So we do the agriculture program in partnership with Roebuck Plains Station. Um, hospitality, we work in with the Mabu Mai Cafe and we're looking to partner with Cable Beach Club to get some real high level experience for our participants there. And we're also hoping to branch into a partnership with Southern Cross Care um, and working with our um, disability and elder support program to train people up in age, age care services. Everyone has like dreams and goals that they want to work towards and all youth really want to contribute towards you know their community and they all have like incredible goals that they want to you know like achieve just like each one of us and so yeah I really I love meeting all the youth in this community and I love you know like seeing how they're going to be you know you know, the next members of the community, like active participants in their community. My highlight is getting more information for elders as well as uh, um, getting them to do Yarrow Bingo in Yarrow language, um, which is, was a joy. Um, we also, I also enjoyed the elders morning tea, bringing elders down to the Lasta exhibition and uh, reminiscing of the old times and the songs that they, they were singing. They really loved that, enjoyed it, as well as uh, a big uh, luncheon uh, that was actually donated from Coles in uh, Pass Valley there. Hi, I'm Julie Melbourne. I'm the manager of the environmental services team and uh, I work with uh, Dean Matthews, who's a senior uh, project officer and uh, he and I work very closely together across lots of, uh, of the more strategic projects. We have eight country managers, um, five Wamba and three Jandu. We've actually got a great team because we've got um, a few people that have been there for a very long time, like three of the Wamba have been in the, in the jobs for maybe six or seven years and so they're very skilled, very knowledgeable. Uh, then there's two of the Jandu who've been uh, in the team for at least two and a half, going on three years. And they are also very skilled and um, knowledgeable uh, women. And, uh, and then we've got three younger country managers who started uh, last year. And um, they are just starting out. They're just starting their Cert, t cert 2. Um, but they love being out in the bush and they love learning and uh, they've all got very diverse interests and skills and uh, most of the time it all comes together pretty well. Mabo Ngurungara, Ngayu Ngilawal Dean Matthews, Nyambaburi Yaro Environmental Service Officer. Oh, this year is actually 10 years of um, joint management. This year has been an anniversary, um, 10 years since the, the amendment, so um, I've just come back from Perth, just talking around the annual performance um, and assessment of marine parks. We have Rabak Bay Naglagun Marine Park, and then obviously, how do we um, look at how, you know reporting back on the health and viability of um, our marine park here, but also um, other marine parks in the state? What does that mean for us? Um, 
means employment. Um, we have now, well, I suppose, six um, Yarra Rangers within the Department of Biodiversity Conservation Yarra Joint Management Program. Um, a number of them have gone through and, and fully, uh, I suppose, accreditation in regards to the Certificate for and Conservation Land Management. And a number of them now are sitting in, uh, I suppose, managerial positions within the construct of the Yarra Joint Management Program. And I suppose for us, it's an investment from our community, seeing our young men grow and mature into positions within the department is um, an investment, and an investment for the future. Indigenous people want water rights, um, so we, we're fighting for strategic indigenous water reserves, but we also want to be part of the planning to ensure that water planning is done um, in the Kimberley uh, properly. Through the IPA program, we've got a number of water monitoring programs. So we've got monitoring our gillers, but we also work with the state in regards to um, groundwater uh, monitoring. We can see health of wetland through um, you know, indicators of greenness, richness, um, but we're also monitoring groundwater bores as well. So we're looking at building that picture of what's happening underneath, and we're correlating that with rainfall events. So we've got a new environmental service unit, I suppose, database now where we're asking the government to provide us those, those data sets um, so we can monitor in real time. My name is Desmond Billy. I'm one of the Wamba country managers here at Yaru office. My role in being a Yaru is just going out on country and yeah, looking after the country, what the old people have been looking after. Yeah, so our role is just to go out and just look after the land, make sure land is in good spirit. They will be monitoring, eh? just yeah, setting up uh, camera traps and yeah, seeing them come out at night and yeah, seeing them active. Yeah, just letting us know that they still exist. My highlight of this year was probably uh, Dugong research and XMath. So I went with the world's leading uh, Dugong scientist, Chris Kledger. So that was heaps of fun, really enjoyed that. And yeah, that was probably my main highlight of the year. So we were tagging them first, we had to like, there was a jet, jet ski and then there was a boat and we were kind of just chasing them and basically jumping on them and yeah, wrestling with dugongs and stuff and yeah, that was heaps of fun I guess and just getting biopsy samples and putting satellite tags and all that type of stuff. Well, I like working out on country. The most thing I like is like working with the wildlife that we get to do. So um, last year we had to go down to Eco Beach to do some turtle monitoring. So just like tagging turtles, weighing them and tagging the DNA. We also did the bilbies as well, like to go out with DBCA and did um, looking for tracks and scats for um, bilbies. So that was pretty good. Good experience with that. One of the highlights for me this year was going out uh, to do some drone work with DBCA to some of the uh, communities uh, that have mangrove populations in the Kimberley to be able to uh, go out there and work out the density of those mangroves and just be able to walk around in the mud flats and just survey those areas. So that was a pretty fun trip. There was about a week's worth of time out there so it was good to see some of the Kimberley going on a trip like that. The reason we want to take care of the mangroves is that they're kind of their own ecological system. They have a bunch of their own biodiversity and other life forms inside the mangroves that live out there. Birds, turtles, uh, a lot of di different kinds of uh, invertebrates live in the mangroves and they're a main food source for a lot of indigenous people out in those areas. So it's pretty important to maintain their health. Some of the other work that I do is um, more, more drone work essentially. Uh, doing on sustainable grazing sites out in Roebuck Plains uh, at a number of different points that help us determine the vegetation health and uh, soil and water consistency in areas around uh, where there's cattle influence or grazing that's going to be occurring. So we fenced off 24 sites and in those 24 sites we fly a drone over the top on both sides and it creates a sort of uh, the imagery that we get from the drone. Visually it shows us the uh, difference between the amount of vegetation on the ground so uh, a certain level of greenness is, appears by how much actual tree vegetation is there. This year I'd say you know we've um, done some work fencing off um, uh, the gillers, the springs around Yarrow country on the robot plans. 
So yeah, it was good to actually go back and, you know, after it's been fenced off from cattle, go back and yeah, it was actually good to see the vegetation and the abundance of wildlife that's come back into those places. There was lots of birds, you know, goannas and wallabies and stuff. So yeah, it was all good and like, yep, yeah, never actually seen it because you actually get a lot of birds that actually <laughs> nest in the grass. So yeah, I actually, that more or less was devastated before from cattle. So we fenced it off and like within a couple of years you could see the change. So just to see that in itself is you know, a bit of an eye opener for me. That basic, simple measure to maintain country, just put a fence around it and let it go and it just comes back itself. And it's like, wow, you know. So just to see actual the country itself come back to its natural state, you actually feel good in your heart to actually be out there. You know, it's a happy job in itself. We want to protect our cultural obligations, but also how do we participate in the in the growth of the region as well? Um, we have to, you know, generate um, uh, economics or economy. Um, we know that you know Yarrow own rubber plant station, and what are the potential benefits to Yarrow in the agriculture industry here? But at the same time, we know that that rubber plant rubber plants in that landscape is a living cultural landscape to Yarrow. It has a number of gillers. You know, fundamentally, we tie everything back to Bugaragara, and, and that's the obligation that we have to uphold and protect and manage moving forward as an organisation, but also as a, as a um, business development. How do we participate in, in the growth of the region? I'm led a lot by the CDU, but I, I work extensively with um, cultural reference to do with things like naming of roads for a new project, um, things like talking about whether a facility that's going to be built is actually culturally appropriate, um, whether should it have, have something additional built into it. So that would be a process we go through before any build and also making sure that um, our elders are comfortable with, the, I guess, largely with the liane that's being brought to the building before it actually is uh, a structure. We have had a great year in the dry season with the cafe um, and the functions and the young people that have worked across there. And now we're looking really forward to the um, health and wellbeing campus out at Clemenson Street. Step up, step down. And we need this sort of uh, facility here and room like because of our countrymen here. They're thinking of um, building um, dialysis. Oh, what's that, renal? Or... Yeah. And, and and that is very, that's one of the very important um, things that I like to see built up because a lot of countrymen are in dialysis in Perth, you know, and they want to be near home with families and friends. And I just came back from Perth and it breaks my heart. We've taken the investment projects back in house, which we used to um, have managed by exterior consultancy, whether it's one of the, uh, the big real estate agents in town. So that's been really beneficial to Yara. I think if we're going to hold on to properties, then we need to actually be have the capacity in house to actually work with them. I think we've probably three highlights for me have been the Nugula Jandu exhibition, which was amazing working with the ladies across there. Um, that was a fantastic weekend. They've actually just booked in next year for a whole week for an exhibition, which is great. Um, the Shinju Matsuri event here, where we had a, a smoking ceremony, Welcome to Country. We had lovely ladies from the language department touring people through the facilities and talking about the artwork. Um, then we had uh, Dean Matthews and um, Portolano men uh, telling stories and we had a five course meal of course delivered by um, our cafe staff and we also brought in a whole lot of the hospitality trainees to help us. My proudest moment this year would be winning the Broom Business Awards for startup company, best startup company, and also the birth of my new son, Sonny. This is an incredible centre. I'm really, really uh, happy to come back. Um, and the food was five star. It was beautiful this morning. The coffee and the food was five star. And I think um, the elders and the old people um, would be very proud of the younger generation for you know their leadership in, in making spaces that are safe. Um, and yeah, um, it should be a, fi a fixture on everyone's visit to, to come to. Years ago, we conducted a survey to Indigenous families across the Broome region, um, and that indicated to show that there were 
a lot of housing problems at the time with people being homeless, living in overcrowding houses, um, not being able to afford anything on the open market within Broome. And so Yarrow decided to create all these amazing programs to help in that housing area. So now we have officially moved into a new program called the Jalbijia, which means your home in Yarrow. Um, and they decided to go through uh, Northwest Aboriginal Housing to help support this program. And basically it's about letting our Indigenous community know how important it is to get into the market and even buy their own homes. So most of our participants within Jalbijia, none of their family members have ever owned homes before. So they're the first generation that will be going through this process. Um, and my job basically is to support them to get there in any way possible. Um, and that includes, you know, even if I have to spend an hour doing gardening with them because they want to maintain their garden. So I can do anything to do with anything to help them achieve that goal. So not everything is necessary about, you know, that house and, you know, looking after it. It could even be referring them to services for, um, you know, uh, mental health or helping them assist in areas where they think, you know, they need support with their children. So I can do everything and anything in this program to support those participants to um, make their Leon feel good. I think when you're working in a place like Yaru, everyone is always determined to do what's best for the community. Um, even though the native title sits with the Yarra people, it's important that we look after all our people in, in Broome community because we have, you know, um, various people that live here now that we want to support in all aspects to make the whole community thrive.